What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well today. I'm going to be giving you my gaming performance review for the new AMD graphics cards, the 7900 XTX, as well as the 7900 XT, and I'm going to be testing in my all new test setup with the 7950X. So you guys don't have to worry about any CPU bottlenecks in this review, like in my previous 40 series content with the 9900K, and I've got all new numbers retested, you know, the 40 series and stuff like that. So we're going to be getting into all of those numbers very soon, going, covering the testing methodology. We'll be testing rasterization as well as ray tracing performance separately so you can guys get a better picture based on, you know, what's important to you. The value of these cards is they are quite pricey. So hopefully you guys can make a better purchase decision once these cards do launch tomorrow morning. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22. And then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking Buy Now on any software products over there, just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply, and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10. Go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's going to be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds. Or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. Now, before we get into the numbers, I do want to cover, like I said, the test setup as well as all of the settings and everything that was used that way in case you guys have any questions, uh, you know, about what was used if it's not on the graph or something. That way, at least you guys have a better idea of the test setup and everything that's going into this. So, as I said, I'm running on a brand new system with the AMD 7950X CPU. So, CPU bottleneck is gone along with DDR5 memory at 6,000 megahertz, a G-Skill uh, Trident Z uh, kit of RAM with AMD Expo support. So all the best stuff, honestly, running off of a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. So we're not going to be seeing any bottlenecks here, at least in 4K. It doesn't mean it won't happen in 1440p. That still does rear its ugly head uh, in some t in some titles, not, not as much as uh, I'm going to educate for sure, but definitely does happen from time to time. Now, for all of the games, I was testing on the latest driver from NVIDIA as well as the latest press driver that was supplied along with the 7900 graphics cards for AMD, which will obviously be available to the public once the cards are publicly released. We did testing at 4K as well as 1440p at native resolution. So didn't use any DLS or FSR or anything. I wanted to be strictly GPU bound and really take a look at what these different cards can do just straight up head to head, balls to the wall, apples to apples comparisons at native, like I said, with rasterized performance. And then I'm also going to have a separate chart for um, ray tracing performance, as well as some synthetics with 3D Mark Port Royal, as well as the Speedway benchmark. But with all of that out of the way, let's get into discussing the performance numbers on the RX 7900 cards where we're testing with the 700 XTX, the XT, as well as the RTX 4080, as these are all hugging right around the $1,000 price point. Didn't include 4090 numbers on this because I was a little bit restricted for time. And I, like I said, I had to go back and retest stuff because I'm on a new processor now versus the 9900K. And honestly, that card's $600 more than the 7900 XTX. So I don't feel like too many people are going to be considering one or the other. They're probably going to be around that $1,000 price point. So I chose to go with those three cards there. And we'll start off with 4K native resolution, as I said, ultra preset, no ray tracing with our average FPS, where you can see the 7900 XTX 
at $1,000 is looking like a very good value for rasterized performance considering that it is $200 less than the RTX 4080. Now this is going to, spoiler alert, this is going to be a drastically different looking chart when we start discussing ray tracing. Uh, AMD kind of gets their ass spanked when it comes to ray tracing for the most part. So with typical rasterized performance though, the 7900 XTX does look at, like a fairly strong value here. As you can see, it's doing very well here at 4K. The only title dipping down below 60 FPS average was in Cyberpunk 2077. But the 700 XTX got an average of 98 in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, while the 4080 got 92 FPS. So a little bit faster for sure. And the, considering the fact that it's $200 cheaper, really nothing to scoff at. Although Nvidia does have some other features that AMD does not have to offer. We'll talk about that in the conclusion as that definitely needs to be weighed in terms of your purchase consideration. And the 7900 XT expectedly does pull up the rear at 82 average FPS in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as that's more likely going to compete with the upcoming uh, 4070 Ti from NVIDIA whenever that does release. We've also got Modern Warfare 2 here looking very strong, actually, on AMD here at 106 average FPS on the XTX, while the uh, 4080 was a fair bit behind here at 88 average FPS, and the XT pulls up with 79. Now, Cyberpunk is one of those titles that does favor NVIDIA, but it, it still stayed pretty close. Uh, if it favored AMD, it probably would have the AMD card probably would have pulled ahead, but Nvidia takes the crown here as the only card getting an average over 60 frames per second. F122 also did seem to favor Nvidia in my testing here, at least at 4K, getting an average of 169 FPS and the XTX falling behind at 161, while the 7900 XT got 147. Looking at Far Cry 6, this is definitely a title that does favor AMD, especially even with ray tracing as it uses DXR. So at 115 average FPS, it easily beats the RTX 4080 at 101, and the XT pulls up the rear with 91 average FPS, looking like a fairly okay value. But at $100 less, the, X the XTX honestly does look like a better buy to me, in my personal opinion. The Hor at Horizon Zero Dawn, again, that leaned towards NVIDIA, with the RTX 40 getting an average of 110 FPS versus the 99 of the XTX. Guardians of the Galaxy also did seem to favor NVIDIA, in this particular benchmark with rasterization getting an average of 130 versus the 108 of the XTX and the XT not too far behind it 101 and Watch Dogs Legion did seem to go pretty well for AMD here getting an average of 88 FPS and uh, the 4080 getting an average of 81. Also go ahead and put the 1% lows up on your screen here and leave them there in case you want to go back and check them out. Apart from one game, really nothing here uh, stood out as surprising, apart from Guardians of the Galaxy, which had some massive frame drops on the AMD graphics cards. Now, I'm hoping that this is a driver issue, something they can resolve at a later date, but that seems to be a fairly big trend when it comes to AMD cards, um, as they do not produce as many WHQL drivers as NVIDIA. They have a lot more beta drivers, end up having a lot more driver issues. This has been a consistent thing for years. So again, this is another factor to weigh massive frame drops on Guardians of the Galaxy, bring it down below 40 FPS when the 1% low on the 4080 was 104 FPS. So seeing that drop down into the 30s is just not okay in my personal opinion. Moving things over to 1440p, you could see any one of these cards is going to be an absolute monster uh, for you if you decide to pick it up for 1440p, which could very likely be the sweet spot, especially for people that may want may not want to use something like DLSS or FSR to be getting solid frames, and especially if you're considering any sort of uh, competitive gaming scenario, like in something like Modern Warfare 2, or some other titles out there, uh, definitely 1440p is going to be a great place to be for some high refresh gaming on any of these cards, but still very, very pricey, honestly, if you're going for 1440p gaming, especially when you see some titles like F1 2022 going at well over 200 frames per second on all of these graphics cards, but still things stacking up fairly consistently to what we saw with the 4K numbers here, just getting higher numbers here really at 1440p as we're still at a uh, native res and not using any ray tracing. And I'll go ahead and put up the 1% lows here now if you do want to go through those one at a time. Once again though, Guardians of the Galaxy, some strong 1% low performance for NVIDIA while on the AMD cards, it tanked really, really hard again on the Guardians of the Galaxy test. So that's something to be aware of. It, you know, it could happen if you're really wanting to play Guardians of the Galaxy. It had some big frame drops in the benchmark on that one. Now I want to move also into some ray tracing testing as this is, you know, modern technology. It's been around for, for a fair few years now. 
And it's starting to become easier and easier to run, especially on the latest NVIDIA RTX 40 series. When you consider things like frame generation and using DLSS, it's going to be viable to be able to use ray tracing in a lot of games moving forward. So it's something that you're probably going to want to factor into your purchase. Even the cynical people out there that say they don't care about ray tracing, at some point you're going to have to probably care. And if you're willing to spend around $1,000 or more on a graphics card, I have to think you're going to want to use ray tracing and all the nicest features. I mean, that's just the way I look at it personally. And when it came to ray tracing performance, NVIDIA wins very heavily here, apart from in one title, which does utilize DXR. So that's Far Cry 6 there, which the 7900 XTX did win out with an average of 92 FPS, but the 4080 only lost by five frames per second, which was closer, I believe, than any of the other uh, 4K numbers there where it was trailing behind. So the 4080 looks very strong in ray tracing, while, the AM while AMD themselves still have a lot of catching up to do. As you can see in all of the other games, NVIDIA is almost doubling their performance in some cases. I mean, in Cyberpunk, it's pretty embarrassing, honestly, to see 17 frames per second on a brand new $1,000 graphics card. Well, you know, NVIDIA is not doing anything spectacular there either at 29 average FPS. You could bump that up if you were to use DLSS or FSR on either one of them. But with NVIDIA, you could also utilize frame generation, and that will definitely take you well over 60 frames. AMD does have FSR 3 coming at some point, which is going to be similar to, to frame generation, but it's not coming till next year, and we don't know exactly when. So right now, it's really just on a promise, and yeah, that's what it is. F122, again, 4080 pulled up by 20 FPS here, roughly. Guardians of the Galaxy, another strong showing for NVIDIA in that title, unsurprising. Watch Dogs Legion actually closer than I expected. The XTX getting an average of 36 and the 4080 getting an average of 44 FPS while the XTX, the XT, sorry, pulled up with 31 FPS at the end and also put up the 1% low numbers now here as well for all of the ray tracing tests, which were done at 4K, native resolution, no FSR or anything like that enabled for any of these tests. So that's just the raw performance that you're seeing there between these different cards. One more batch of tests that I do have to share with you, which again is really going to highlight ray tracing as both of these 3D Mark tests do utilize ray tracing in them. The brand new 3D Mark Speedway test where we could see the score for the RTX 4080 pulls ahead quite a bit at 7,082. Now, if this test was, was able to be done, done without any ray tracing whatsoever, again, I don't know why you'd want to as that's like basically just cutting out one of the legs for no reason. Uh, 7,082 versus 5,214. But if there was no ray tracing, I'm sure the XTX would be running faster than the RTX 4080, but we are using ray tracing because it's 2022 and ray tracing looks very, very hot. And the 7900 XT got a score of 4,398. Moving over to 3D Mark Port Royal, which is also, again, another ray tracing test. Pretty similar story here. The 4080 pulls ahead at 17,067, the XTX at 14,272, and the 7900 XT at 12,898, and that's all on the graphics score only. All right, so you guys got to look at the numbers there. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think of the gaming performance on the AMD RX 7000 series of graphics cards. I know there's a lot of hype going into this launch. There was a lot promised, uh, you know, from AMD on this. And I think they hit on it, you know, for the most part. I think they overestimated their numbers maybe a little bit uh, during the presentation, you know, about a month ago in Vegas, which I was at. But still, at the end of the day, they are coming in looking very strong in rasterized performance when tested up against the RTX 4080. However, that is not the full picture. Even though they're $200 less and they're doing very strong in rasterized performance, they still don't win in every game when it comes to rasterized. And when it comes to ray tracing, they do simply just get beat apart from in Far Cry 6, which was one title. There's far more title, there's far fewer titles using DXR right now. So that's something to consider. And as I said earlier, if you're spending $900,000 on a graphics card, I feel like you're, you're at a certain level, which is still, that's a very expensive card. I know we're talking about these as like, you know, like these flagship cards, which, you know, used to be around six, $700. That's just not the case anymore. These are, we're talking about $900, $1,000 for these cards. And, you know, even if the, ne the next cards that come out are, are going to be around five, $600, that's still going to be very, very expensive for what essentially will now, uh, we're going to be moving into an era where we're going to have like six and $700 cards, which are considered like mid tier and like budget gamer cards are like $400, $500. That's like, that is a reality of what we are moving into right now. So people spending $1,000 upwards on graphics cards 
Um, and then, you know, not getting to use all the new latest features would be kind of a bummer for me, honestly, if I went out and spent that much on something and then I couldn't utilize one of the newest, coolest features out there. Then you also have to consider something like DLSS versus FSR. DLSS is still a better solution as they're using tensor cores and AI to be able to get the smoothest, better picture possible. So for me, it, I would still lean towards NVIDIA at this, at this time, even though the price on the RTX 4080 absolutely sucks, but there's already been some price cuts on it over in Europe. So we'll have to wait and see if those do trickle down over to the US. Uh, it's just a shame that NVIDIA did launch it at the price that it did because it does sort of muddy the waters a little bit in terms of this comparison. Uh, because if it was priced at the exact same price at $1,000, it would still be very expensive. Both cards would still cost more than I really feel like that they should. But then it would you could make a more of a case for NVIDIA. The Really the main thing that AMD has going for it right now is that it's $200 cheaper. But if you're willing to spend a thousand bucks, you're probably willing to spend twelve hundred. So you're gonna have to weigh your options there on, you know, if you're gonna split hairs for a couple hundred bucks to have to use FSR and not have frame generation, have worse ray tracing performance. And you know, for me personally, I I would lean towards NVIDIA on this one. Personally, like that's me, but you know, I know that's not going to be the case for everyone. This is just all the data, so you guys can take with it and do what you want. And uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on which graphics card you would pick up now based on the pricing here and everything. I think with the prices, there's some greed on both sides. Neither one of these sides are perfect little angels in terms of their pricing. So I know there's that, there's that like uh, e evil dark side of, of NVIDIA that like there's like in the uh, in the Reddit scene and all that kind of stuff. And everyone thinks like NVIDIA is the evil empire. Um, but honestly, both sides are charging an arm and a leg for these cards. Let's be honest. So let's call it what it is. And you guys let me know down in the comments below if you happen to agree. And I will catch you all next time for another video. Peace.